And what would you say uh, that the role of the museums today in the democratic society is? Well, you know, I think that museums and indeed uh, that sort of entire breadth of cultural institutions really function as social condensers and as places of civic discourse or can uh, function as places of civic discourse. And how can museums be an open space for everyone? Well, you know, we all come with a bit of a legacy over the past 150 years or so of the 19th century object-based museum. And I think that we're in a shift right now of trying to create museum spaces that are more inclusive. The most important way that we can do this is to become not simply spaces of display, but also spaces of community. So looking at, at ways to make the museum a site of production, exchange, and discourse, as well as, as a space of, of, of objects and objects presentation. How do you involve people in the museums? A wonderful question. Uh, through a, very, a, a variety of means. The first is to ask them how they wish to be involved. People are, are not waiting, hopping from foot to foot, champing at the bit for museums to come in and solve their problems. Uh, so first looking at what the ecology within your own community already is of community organizations, community partnerships, and look at ways to partner strategically with existing programs and existing entities to augment the work that they're already doing. It's a great way to start. And how do you engage young people? Ah, a wonderful question. You know, with, with engagement of young people, I've, I've been thinking myself for a while about the life cycle of engagement, right? Many of us go to museums when we're very, very young. Uh, we go to museums with our parents, perhaps, or on school trips. That visitation falls off, and we pick this up again when we're in our you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, in many cases. So what happens with that dip that we see uh, with, with museum engagement? So in terms of how we continue to, to keep that engagement through the full life cycle of the visitor really requires us to think about what visitor needs are and how those needs change between you know, childhood and adulthood. Something that I've seen at many other institutions that has been very successful is the development of a teen council where you actually bring together a group of very committed teenagers to help the museum folks actually plan those programs. So as, you know, as I'm very fond of saying it's not about um, trying to come up with wonderful ideas for your visitors, it's about coming up with those ideas with your visitors, so ask them. Well, at the Baltimore Museum of Art, we're working on a lot of different interesting programs and initiatives that get at this. We have uh, an off-site satellite museum called the BMA Outpost that goes and visits uh, many, many neighborhoods throughout Baltimore for month-long residencies uh, that involve art making, looking at replicas of works in the BMA's collection, and doing asset mapping within those uh, communities where the outpost is stationed, asking the people in those communities what home means to them, what they care about, what matters in their community. This goes onto a communal map that is then given back to those communities and then travels to other communities. Uh, we're also working on a wonderful immersive space in the contemporary wing called the Big Table. There's a large table in the center of the space after which it is named. Um, and it examines one big idea in contemporary art over the period of a year. Uh, so a very, very deep uh, immersion in a single idea. And this really is about this notion that we don't all come to museums with the same skill sets. Uh, uh, and we need to give people multiple points of entry into material that can often be very, very challenging uh, for them and, and for it, it to be okay and for us to validate that, that the fact that it is challenging material is something that's really important and we do in a lot of our different programs. Um, we've also just launched the Patricia and Mark Joseph Education Center uh, with a three-year thematic exhibition called Imagining Home. Uh, this exhibition is a cross-collection. We have almost every area of the museum's collection represented, uh, thematically organized around a, a subject that I think is near and dear to all of us and is universally relatable, the notion of home, although we all experience it, of course, in very different ways. And we're hard at work on planning the next three-year cycle uh, of those exhibitions right now. So how do you involve the citizens of Baltimore? 
um, many different ways. So we have um, community pro we have a community advisory panels for many of our, our programs. We'll, we'll pull together stakeholders within the community uh, to take part in the planning process, as well as scholarly advisory panels. In terms of the public programs that we do, we're always looking for um, opportunities to collaborate with, with different agencies and, and come up with strategic partnerships where we're bringing different populations into the museum and its programs. So, for instance, we'll work with our, our nearby partner, uh, Johns Hopkins um, University, which is right up the road, but we'll also work with the tremendous creative community throughout Baltimore. Baltimore is going through a, a real renaissance at the moment in terms of its, of its cultural sector uh, and in terms of its innovation sector. And so we're always looking at ways to partner with other institutions who are already working with populations that, that we're working with. Um, and we, we do this throughout all of our programming. So wherever we can, you can find, the, and I, I would recommend this to everyone, wherever you can find that opportunity for the strategic partnership, where you can find that other institution that may not be a cultural institution. We've, we've worked with people as varied as cartographers and calligraphers and, and social service agencies uh, and, and various folks uh, that we're working with. We have a wonderful partnership coming up with Chase Brexton, which is a very, very large healthcare concern uh, that we'll be working with on a one-year project. Um, so finding those various access points. So not everyone necessarily knows the museum, but everybody may very well know their local supermarket or their lo local healthcare provider. So that's ways of touching different audiences. Yeah.